Several years ago, back in the late 90s, the uh, U.S. Air Force, uh, through their U-2 program and their uh, RF-4 program, provided us with infrared imaging uh, capabilities. It was very limited at that time. Uh, when the Air Force and, and then the Air Guard uh, eliminated that program and left the department without an infrared imaging program. The original parameters or mission uh, parameters that we laid out were to provide that kind of service on a 24-7 throughout fire season. The aircraft system was designed from the bottom up. When we got together with our committee and decided what needs to be in the aircraft, we brought in people from the field, the end users, the, the mappers on the fire ground, and asked them what they needed and how they needed it. The initial goals of the project were to have a rapid simulation of fire perimeter data and immediate display and distribution of that data down to the ground from the aircraft. The King Air 200 allows us to provide uh, services up and down the state uh, within a, a short period of time. With a 300 plus uh, miles per hour speed, we can provide uh, infrared services to two major incidences uh, throughout the state, one in the north and one in the south. The uh, aircraft has been modified structurally to uh, uh, extend it by uh, uh, 37 inches to provide us uh, an ability to put uh, six cameras into the aircraft. Uh, one of them is a, a video uh, digital camera and the others are, are near-infrared cameras. There's five additional near-infrared cameras. The system actually has six sensors in it which cover many bands of visible light all the way up into the very long wave thermal infrared band. We're here at the user console in the King Air and this user console is designed to be the data acquisition point platform and operators console as well as the interpretive station for the actual data that's being collected by the thermal camera. This display is, is demonstrating the thermal camera coming live through the system and along the side here we see the barcoded attitude and GPS data being collected by the aircraft and collated and mingled into the photos here. So at any point in time we can freeze an image and we can know exactly where we are in latitude and longitude. Many map resources here on the screen that allow us to have immediate access to the entire state's data of GPS data tied to the topo maps. And in this case I'm showing a, f a flight line where we went down to uh, Mission Viejo and you'll notice the data is coming up showing us the position of our destination and the system going along recording thermal data. The barcode along the bottom is showing us the different degrees of temperature that are being sensed in that imagery and it's set up to accommodate uh, very wide ranges of data. From the time we're over the incident we can take our pictures, take our videotapes, create a perimeter of the fire and within a matter of minutes we can have it downloaded down to the FTP site. Realistic terms, we can have a perimeter of this fire in 30 minutes or less from the time that we get over the incident. The system in the aircraft is a real-time data collection system and just like you see video streaming behind me, that video can be drawn on top of by the user interpreter in the aircraft. As that data that is being identified and created above the video image is created, it can then be immediately sent out of the aircraft to the ground. Immediately as it's picked up on the ground in its standard format, a GIS format, it can be opened by any of the state mapping resources and brought up on the screen. None of the data needs to be cut, pasted, changed in formats and handed off to many different computer users. The people on the ground now can get helicopters, perhaps they might be able to fly around the fire if it's not too windy or not too smoky, and they might be able to get the information. With this aircraft, we can get the information. We can get it to them in a very timely manner and quick enough that they can utilize it. One of the key benefits of the system is that we are collecting such a wide or hyperspectral array of data that it's an, basically an unlimited resource for interpretation. Some examples of the other types of analysis we can get from this system are things such as spawning beds along streams. We can identify very well hydrocarbons in water. A classic example of which would be if there was a, a train wreck along a river and diesel fuel is spilling into the river, we can fly over and see that as clear as day and identify whether or not the booms that have been placed along the river to retain the spill have been placed out at sufficient distance. Uh, wildlife habitat identification and migration is certainly a very, very strong suit of this system in that we can easily identify grazing areas, overgrazed areas, 
uh, riparious vegetation issues. We can also identify noxious weed issues. There's unlimited capabilities in interpretation. It is, the system is only really limited by the knowledge of the interpreter and what they know how to do with this data. The aircraft itself is, is stabilized using the autopilot, the flight management system, and the speed. It allows us to, to do multiple missions in a short period of time. Uh, and also the capabilities allow us to switch from one resource mission to another uh, without having to go back to, uh, to the ground and, re, uh, uh, and reprogram. While fire continues to be the primary mission of this aircraft, certainly the investment in the aircraft and the investment in the time to put this system together means that we need to get more out of it. We need to have the ability to gather wide arrays of information while the aircraft is en route, over a site, and returning. We designed this system to be utilized by all emergency personnel in basically all kinds of instances. Uh, through the years we've been seeking to find a platform to provide that with and with the new technology I think we have a department uh, resource here that not only provides good imaging for incident uh, but also for resource management acquisition and, and imagery. I'm extremely pleased with the results coming out of the system in that the data is highly accurate very clear and concise to the missions we've already identified. We are very eager to get out and identify other types of missions, gather data, and work with other resource agencies to identify how the data will be utilized for them. The ability of this technology is remarkable. The Airborne Infrared Imaging System is an important tool, not just for CDF, but for the state of California.